Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my quantum statistics tutorials. This is tutorial number 37, and I'm going to discuss the partition function and free energy. Basically, I'm going to see why the partition function is so useful. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous videos to this are as follows. In number 34, I showed a formula for the average energy using the partition function. 17, I showed you how to calculate average values of energy in general using the partition function. And in 15, I made the Boltzmann factor, which led into the partition function on 16. So what revision do we need to do for this? Well, the revision we need is as follows. First of all, we saw previously, we, well, we call Z is the partition function. And, there's, and the partition function is the sum of Boltzmann factors, e to the minus beta e, or e to the minus beta epsilon, in fact, I'm going to go from now on, e to the minus beta epsilon, where beta is a thermodynamic beta, 1 over kt. Okay, so it's the sum of the Boltzmann factors. Each of these, e to the minus beta epsilon, is called a Boltzmann factor. But what we proved, or I showed, is that the average energy for a single particle can easily be gotten with the following, uh, with the following ex expression. So, you can look that up if you like. But the point here is that we're able to get U, by the way, is the total energy of a system is minus N over Z del Z del beta. By just getting the partition function, we're able to get the total energy in the system very quickly. So, that gives you, you know, I suppose, an insight into one of the reasons why the partition function is so useful. But next what we'll see is there is a relationship between the partition function and the Helmholtz free energy. And because of that, we'll be able to calculate loads of thermodynamic quantities just by knowing the partition function. And we'll also see in a moment that the first few terms of the partition function are the most important, and they're not usually too difficult to calculate. So as a result, getting the partition function generate isn't too difficult. So, in previous videos, we showed that the multiplicity, which sometimes is written as omega, Okay, is the number of accessible states. Okay, or we'll say the number of the number of accessible microstates, and of course fixed that's at a fixed temperature. Alright? Now Z, as I've seen we've seen in the past, the partition function essentially counts the number of accessible uh, microstates again, but this is also at a this is at a fixed. Excuse me, that's a fixed energy. What am I saying? There? This is at a fixed temperature. Now, why is it at a fixed temperature? Well, remember, Z is a function, is a function of beta. That means it's a it, that means it's a function of kT. So it's a function of temperature. So it's always at a fixed temperature that we talk about uh, the partition function. All right. So, the multiplicity counts the number of microstates that are available or accessible at fixed energy, and the partition function counts the number of microstates accessible at fixed temperature. So, remember that we could use, we use the multiplicity to get entropy. So, we said that entropy is equal to k times the natural logarithm of the multiplicity. So, the question I ask you is, is there an, an analogous uh, quantity using the uh, the partition function. Okay? Now, so, to be honest, it's quite some pretty in, uh, intuitive, or not, in, sorry, counterintuitive physics as far as I'm concerned. But we can suggest the following. We can suggest, and I'll show you why in a moment, we can suggest, yes, that Z in actual fact is equal to E to the minus F over KT, where F is the Helmholtz free energy. So we can see, um, we will see that there is an actual fact and an analogous function. So here, the, uh, we have e to the s over kt, or oh, s over k, in fact. Okay? Anyway, so, where does this come from? Let's, uh, we expect that the, we expect the following. We expect that the natural logarithm of the partition function, natural logarithm of z, in increases, goes up at constant temperature. Okay? That's just, that's pretty straightforward. We, we expect that. Okay. Just as we, we expect that the natural logarithm of the multiplicity of states intends, intends to increase at constant energy. 
all right so do we have such a quantity well from our study of thermodynamics and if you want you can look at my videos on thermodynamics we made the following three conclusions that at constant that at constant energy and volume the entropy s tends to tends uh, tends to increase we found that at constant temperature and this time volume the Helmholtz free energy f tends to increase and finally at constant temperature but this time pressure we found that the Gibbs free energy tends to increase and I did videos on each of the three of these so you can and this is my thermodynamic section of course so it seems it seems that we have something it seems that we need something which is proportional to natural logarithm z something is proportional to the natural logarithm of z so this something it tends it tends to increase at constant temperature and volume so because that is what the partition function does so is there anything here which fits the bill so to speak well there is minus f minus the Gibbs free energy tends to increase so I'm going to suggest that minus f is proportional to the natural logarithm of z or that z is equal to kt log z where the proportionality constant is kt I'm going to suggest that now to be honest that's not my suggestion <laughs> I'm not going to say that it is but uh, that is the suggestion that's made so what, we're, what I'm going to do next is prove that so this this is obviously some pretty very 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 smart physics some very intelligent thinking came up with this so what we'll do next is we'll prove that that is the case and why is that important it's important because if it is in fact the case that means we can use the partition function to get the Helmholtz free energy and from the Helmholtz free energy we're able to get all the other thermodynamic quantities such as entropy chemical potential and so on so in actual fact by doing this it's, it's, it's a very neat and quick way of calculating all of these things so the initial definition of Helmholtz free energy is the internal energy in, excuse me, internal energy minus T times S T is the temperature S is the entropy but we're going to suggest that that's equal to minus K T log Z I left out actually by the way uh, down here at the bottom I left out a negative sign okay so what we're saying is this is by definition and this is by suggestion can we prove it or can we show that that is an actual fact the case well let's look at the derivative with respect to temperature of our Helmholtz free energy holding the volume and the number of particles constant that's simply going to be negative s the, the, the entropy okay and using the second law um, we can sorry we can just we can sub back in then I suppose by having the following that it's equal to f minus u over t that's just a small bit of a rearrangement okay so this is at constant volume and constant number of particles so I hope you're used to that that uh, notation next so the equation f is equal to u minus t s here obeys the ordinary differential equation this one here that del f del t is equal to f minus u over t it obeys that so the question we need to ask is does f is equal to minus k log z also obey this particular ordinary differential equation okay does z do it so how do we go about getting this so let's suggest that f is equal to minus k times t the natural logarithm of z we need del f del t now okay the problem here is of course that z is equal to a function uh, a function of beta which is a function of kt so in actual fact we have a function of temperature so it's, it's the chain rule we need to do in order to uh, in order to evaluate this so we're going to get del del t of f and that's going to be equal to so we're just going to use the first of all the uh, the chain rule so it's going to be minus k times <coughs> the logarithm of z okay so that's just differentiating it with respect to t now to use the chain rule then you're going to have kt del del t 
of log z. Now, how are we going to get delta t of log z? That, that looks like a, different, a difficult thing to do. But it's actually not that difficult because we're once again going to use the chain rule. So remember that the partition function is a function of beta, but uh, it's implicitly also a function of temperature. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to get del del t of the natural logarithm of z. Okay, so we're going to apply the, the chain rule. We're just actually going to get del del beta of the logarithm of z. And using the chain rule, we're going to get del beta del t. Okay, that's a small bit of um, maths physics. Okay, so we're going to get del log z del beta and we're going to have once you do the the other derivative we're going to have k times t squared under minus one like that now it doesn't seem to be helpful because uh, we're after getting del del beta of the logarithm of z it doesn't seem to be any good to us but I'm going to show that in actual fact it still is good because del del beta of the natural logarithm of z is equal to also using the chain rule. So it's going to be del log z, del z, and del z, del beta. So you're definitely going to be tested using your chain rule or your chain rule here. Okay, so that's going to be 1 over z, del z, del beta. Okay, now what is this? Going back to our Previous, we saw that the energy is equal to minus 1 over z del uh, z del beta. Okay, so in actual fact, what we have here is plus the energy. Okay, so it turns out that this in actual fact was quite helpful. So, where do we go from here? Um, where do we go from here? Let's put it all together. Let's put it all together. And what we're going to see now is that del f del t at constant volume and constant number of particles is going to be equal to k log z, sorry, minus k log z. Just going to check, excuse me, I'm just going to check, yeah, minus k log z. And then we're going to have minus kt times u over kt squared. And that's going to be equal to minus k log z minus u over t. Or del f del t, constant volume and particles, is equal to f over t minus u over t, which is exactly what we had up here. So in actual fact, it does seem that the suggestion that f, the Helmholtz free energy, is equal to minus kt log z, fits the ordinary differential equation, which we know the Helmholtz of free energy as u minus ts already satisfies. So it seems that we're after doing something pretty damn good here. Okay, so that means from now on, we can say that f is equal to minus kt log z. So what? Well, I'll show you why it's so useful. First of all, let's remember that z is a constant of temperature. Okay, so z is equal to the sum over s of e to the minus beta epsilon, let's say, epsilon being the energy. So epsilon sub s, I suppose, right? So that's going to be equal to e to the minus epsilon beta, epsilon zero beta, um, plus e to the minus epsilon one beta, plus e to the minus epsilon two beta, and off up to infinity. Okay, but the point here is that as the temperature goes to zero, as t goes to zero, e to the minus epsilon sub s beta also goes to zero. But it goes quicker for higher epsilon sub s. So the higher energies that makes this negative exponential bigger, or we'll say it, it makes the negative, negative exponential smaller, or it kills it quicker. So what we can say is that low temperature, actually I'm going to use blue, we can say that at low temperature, we have e to the minus epsilon zero beta is going to be greater than e to the minus epsilon one beta, which is going to be even greater than e to the minus epsilon two beta, and so on. 
like that in general, where, where S is a large number in this case. All right. So what that means, what it suggests, I suppose, is that the, uh, the, the, the contribution here is getting smaller as they go up. So what we can suggest is the following, that e to the minus epsilon beta is much greater than the sum of all the other ones. Like that. Why is that important? The reason it's important is because z, as t approaches 0, is equal to approximately e to the minus epsilon 0 beta. Okay, and where epsilon 0 is, if we were after saying if it's the ground state energy is 0, it goes to 0. Sorry, it goes to 1, excuse me, e to the naught is 1. So the maximum of the partition function is 1, and that happens if you have the 0 energy at the ground state, and it turns out to be 1. Now, I, have, I, I might have lost you there. Finally, what I'm going to show you is the real importance. The real importance is this, because from our thermodynamics, F is equal to, at this stage we saw, kT log Z, but that del F del T at constant V and N gives us the entropy. Del F del V, excuse me, at constant temperature and number of particles gives us the pressure. Finally, del F del N at constant T and V gives us the chemical potential. So getting Z is not so difficult, means getting F isn't so difficult, so getting pressure, uh, pressure, entropy or chemical potential isn't so hard either. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel and please visit universityphysicstorals.com.